Hey everyone, welcome back to Billy Ray Spare Bedroom, where today we are going to be doing, whoosh, we're going to be doing the Squirty Boys, mounting them to the intake, along with the fuel rail, get that all put on. Now, if you have this intake manifold, these are for Gen 3 engines, we don't need these. Yeet. And also we're going to be putting on the throttle body, as well as the accessories that go with the throttle body here on the side, I'll go over them a little later. Uh, I'm just going to be mounting this to the cylinder heads and the engine just so I have a working platform so it's at standing height and I can do my thing. So it'll look cool but it's coming right off because I need that engine hoist because the engine might be going in this weekend. Anywho we're going to be transferring some things over you know like throttle cable bracket and a couple other things just to get this thing all set up and ready to go so when I put the engine in I can just start going to town and getting this thing running hopefully. And throttle body obviously going on and new squirty boys. So I'm going to go out in the garage and take that lifting plate off the block just so I can get this started. Now real quick, if you look under here, I don't know why they put these here. I guess so you don't lose them. They should just put them in a bag like the other ones. But yeah, these nuts come off and they bolt down to the cylinder heads. Good stuff there. We'll take that off, get this thing mounted up just so I have a working platform. So anyway, let's go out in the garage and start taking that thing apart. All right, guys, we're going to start by removing the four 10 millimeter nut slash bolt rods, whatever these are. I'm not sure what they are yet, but we're going to figure that out in a second. So yeah, just all four of them. And then we'll try and get this thing off. Now watch out, there is fuel in here. I can hear it sloshing around. I could have pushed this little straighter valve in and drained it, but fuck that. So let's get these loose and get this off. Uh, all right, now there's little clips holding in the fuel injector, so hopefully this whole thing just goes boop. Yeah, yeah so I'm just deciding to take these little clips off. It's fighting me a little bit, so I'm going to go this route, take these little clips off, and hopefully get the rail off the fuel injectors, because ultimately we just want the rail, not the fuel injectors. And even if I reuse this intake manifold again on a future project, I'm changing the fuel injectors, so... Spam calls from Illinois. Illa fucking annoying. Got you, stick you there. Back here. Okay, so now let's see if we can get this thing off. So we go. There's one. That side, resort to violence. So this thing was being a bitch. Well, I'm being a bitch because I can't get it. Let's get it here. I don't want to scratch that. There we go. Man, these things are just stuck, so no big deal. There we go. All right, we got our old squirty boys off and our old rail. So I'm going to work on getting these injectors off and start cleaning this thing up, get it ready for paint maybe. We'll see about that. Oh geez, I got fuel leaking out. Let me drain it. All right guys, I don't know if you could tell, but if you look in there, yeah, you can. There's an O-ring in there. This one does not. Make sure you get these out because the first time I ever changed a fuel injector on a car, the O-ring stayed in, I didn't notice it, and I was trying to fight and fight and fight to get it back in. Well, I had to do them all, but it was fighting me. So just make sure you get these O-rings out because if you don't, you're going to be struggling, and if you just happen to tighten it up with another O-ring in it, you're probably going to have a leak. So, get these out. I'd say five out of the eight have O-rings stuck in them. So, I'm just going to pluck them out real quick with a pick, and then hopefully be done with that. All right, guys. Time to put on our little squirty boys. Got the intake manifold right here. Show you my little setup. I'm going to put the... Fuel rail right there, it's hanging up right now. And I got a little bit of motor oil that I'm going to use to lube these up and shove them into the fuel rail. Uh, I looked into it just to make sure, but 
you know, some of these O-rings, they want like petroleum jelly and some other things to lube it up before you put it in. Uh, GM recommends motor oil and I just checked forums just to double check that. I have used motor oil before and these specific, I think they're uh, Vidor or something like that, that's the name of the company. Basically, people online were saying you could use whatever. And I'm pretty sure that this is what they use on stock GM. We're gonna go with the motor oil. Got a little cup here. Just gonna dip my finger in, lube it up, and uh, let's get going. All right, so on this particular one, obviously you want that sticking up. So this blue one's gonna go into the rail and the little black one's gonna go down into the hole in the intake. So let's see what we could do. A little dash of oil. So let's see, I don't wanna go too crazy. Just a thin little bead. It's a little thin little bead of oil. And I might as well stick some in here too. See if that just helps it at all. Now when I was taking the old one apart, these things were fighting me and also make sure you get your O-rings taken out of here because a couple of them stuck. So keep that in mind and uh, see what we got here. So stick you in. Ooh, perfect. No one easier than I thought. I'm gonna leave this sticking straight out. This thing actually spins pretty freely, so I assume with the oil, you'll be able to adjust all of them, but the wiring harness is gonna come from the back side of the engine, obviously, and you're gonna plug it in. So this thing may have to turn like slightly to the back, but who knows. So let me get some of these other ones going. We'll get them snapped in and get this rail down. Yeah, it comes with a little plastic cap. This thing may pull the O-ring, but just be careful taking that off. And keep it clean, shove it in. There we go, cool. All right guys, I'm gonna snap the rest of these in and then we'll work on getting this whole thing snapped into the intake manifold. All right guys, got all the fuel injectors on. Some of them fought me a little bit, but you know, by fighting me, it took seven seconds to push it in, aside from like three or four seconds to push it in. So, not that bad. Uh, I had Taco Bell if you hear an errant fart. That's where it comes from. Uh, I'm gonna hang this back up on the hanger and I'm gonna lube all these little black O-rings. Then I'm gonna lube inside these little holes where the fuel injectors go and then hopefully we'll be able to just push this whole thing on. And we got a couple little bolts here. We're gonna use blue Loctite on these. They get tightened to like two foot pounds, so just don't go crazy. So let me lube these up and then we'll get going on putting this in. All right guys, ready to put the fuel rail on. Uh, I lubed up all these little black O-rings with oil and I lubed up some inside the little holes here. Uh, on this particular car, the fuel bleeder is on the front driver's side, so just keep that orientation in mind. And the fuel rail just sticks out to the side and it goes to the back of the car. So let's see if this is painless or painful. It will seem to be oriented the right way. So we'll drop this side in first. We'll drop that one down. Let's see, we give it a little push. That goes in. That one in. That one in. So this whole side's in. Now this side's sitting up high, so let's see. Do a little squeeze, do a little squeeze. Those are in, those two are in, that one's in, I think that one's in. I mean, they all, they all appear to be in, so I can't complain. All right, so that wasn't so bad. So I started on one side, pushed it in, made my way to the other side, pushed it in. So now, we gotta put our little bolts in. Let me figure out what size Allen key you need for these. And let me get some Loctite and we'll bolt these down and be done with this. All right guys, I don't know if you can see this, but... So right in here, this is where our little screws go. Now they don't always line up, so you have to kind of get in there and muscle the rail bracket over to get these started. And once you get them started, we got blue Loctite on here. Uh, it's a five millimeter Allen key or Allen wrench. 
Now the Torx specs are some kind of small uh, inch pound, which comes out to like, you know, two pounds ish. So when you tighten it, just set it down until it stops. That's it. So let's see if we can fight this one in. This one's, this one gave me a problem earlier. Let's see if I get some leverage on here. All right, I got it pulled over and start, 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 start. All right, got it started. Use a little Allen key. Just run it down. Cool. And then once you get it started, just crank, crank, crank. So just give it a little turn, stop right there. All right, cool. And now we have the one on this side. This one's a little off too. It's got to get pushed that way. So I'll lube this one up with a little Loctite. Get it started. And it's usually a good idea to kind of get it in place and then drop it in. Instead of putting the screw in and then trying to figure it out. Like the way I'm doing it right now. So let's see. Let's see if I get that started. Oh, I guess I got it. Cool. Snuck. All right, cool. Our fuel rail and fuel injectors are all in. I wonder if you could spin, yeah, you could, you could spin these a little bit if you need to. They're not in too tight. I mean, they're in tight, but just, they got a little bit of oil in them, so they got some movement. I would just imagine with the heat of the engine and all that stuff, they will dry out eventually. But yeah, we're looking good. All right guys, last thing you gotta do with the fuel injectors is put these little clippy clips on. So I already put these on and we're gonna go over to this and basically, let's see if I can do this one hand. So basically just slide it on. I already explained how to take it off, but they fight you a little bit, but once you get it, of course this thing doesn't want to freaking, there it goes. All right, that one kind of in, just push up on and make sure that you get them to go in that little slot there. Because if you don't, then you could get one of these coming loose. So don't forget them. I almost did until I saw the bag. Put that bag down. Boop. Boop. Anyway, that completes your fuel injectors. I gotta do the other side real quick and go on to the next part. Let's lock tight this bad boy in. Uh, let's see if it takes the same screws. It does, it does. It takes a five millimeter Allen head. So I'm gonna back these out one at a time, put some blue Loctite in. Now I just looked at the directions for these. It says torque it down to one and a half foot pounds, whatever the hell that means. Uh, I don't have anything that does inch pounds or any of that stuff. So we're just gonna snug it accordingly. All right guys, got our throttle body. Bolt it up in place, use some blue Loctite, five millimeter wrench, and just tighten this down. You'll see a slight little gap in there, but the O-ring is blocking everything. Uh, I didn't want to crank it down too hard in case it like bulged out the, the gasket or something, but basically I just took a wrench. I use this, 3 8 drive extension, five millimeter. And basically just tightened it down until like, just putting a little pressure on it stopped it and I didn't want to go further than that. And uh, yeah, fuel rails in. Put the little clip on for the throttle cable. Uh, this one's broken, I want to see if I can find a new one. I don't know if these things are readily available on like Amazon or something, but I'll figure something out for that. And I put the little wiring harness clips back in place. I saved these from the last setup. Everything else we're gonna leave off right now until this goes on to the engine, which, spoiler alert, engine is in, and I forgot to hit record. So you'll get it right when the engine's in, actually in the engine bay. Fun times. But to finish this video off, we're gonna move, you know, these air sensors over. There's dust in there. Get out of there, dust. Yeah, so we're gonna move over these uh, electronics over to the throttle body, and we'll wrap this video up after that. All right, guys, onto the stock throttle body. We're gonna transfer over these sensors to the new throttle body. Very throttle positioning sensor and your idle air control. Uh, they take a T20, both of them. So there's two on each of them. Gonna loosen these up. 
get them taken off and transfer them over to the new throttle body. Let me do that real quick and then we'll wrap up the video. All right guys, just real quick, wanted to show you what our results were. We got our throttle positioning sensor and our idle air control. Now there's a lot of boogery crap in there. So when I took this off, it had a bunch of crap on it. So I wiped it off. I could get a new one, but I'm just gonna run with this for now. Now, another thing is this little orange O-ring got stuck inside the throttle body. So make sure you account for that or you're gonna have an air leak and you're gonna have air getting in that you don't want getting in. And the mass airflow sensor won't pick up on it and you'll have a, a rough idle. So I just wanted to give you that little quick heads up. Uh, I'm going to throw this back in to the new one and we'll wrap up the video after that. All right guys, we got our idle air controller in and our throttle positioning sensor in. Nothing crazy, just tighten them down the best you can. Uh, there's only two ways to put this thing on and the other way would have it pointing out this way. So I just put it on like that. And this one basically only has one way of going on. Now when you go to put this on, you do have to rock the throttle a little bit to get the little tip that's coming out to line up with it and then just slide it in and it closes back up no problem. But this is the only direction it'll work because obviously if you do it the other way, it's just gonna hit here. Yeah, so other than that, this thing looks uh, pretty beautiful. I also put the map sensor on. That thing just snaps in in the back. Probably gonna end up getting a new one because I don't like the way that one looks. And the little O-ring is kind of cruddy, so I'm going to take that out and get a new one. But our fuel injectors are in on both sides. We're all tightened down. Now, this is the end of this video, but if you are putting this onto your vehicle, I got the directions over here, and I will share that with you so you know how to do it. So it says you're going to do first pass 45 inch pounds, and then final pass 89 inch pounds. So that's only like four pounds in like maybe eight, nine, probably closer to eight. And there's a torquing sequence to this. So you're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's basically like a cylinder head. So if you got the cylinder head torqued down, you'll have no problem with this. So that's it for this video on setting up a intake manifold and throttle body and all that stuff. Give you a quick update on the vehicle. Uh, as of this afternoon, the transmission is in. So I already told you earlier, the engine's in, the transmission's in. Uh, I got the slave cylinder in, the master cylinder in, it's all measured out. Uh, I still gotta bleed the system and I have to get the drive shaft in. <clears throat> oh, Taco Bell's coming back to haunt me. So yeah, that, that video's coming along. It's probably gonna be in two parts, I'll do it installing the master cylinder even though that thing was jesus christ so just put it that way but i'll show you that even though i can't really show you too much i just kind of show you progress along the way because there's no way to record that and there's no way to get your hands in there so I'll, I'll go over that in that video and then putting in the slave cylinder and taking the proper measurements here's my board of measurements and mad science and everything and that's the number we ended up with so that'll be in the first video, and then the second video will be installing the transmission, bleeding the lines, putting in a pedal stop for the clutch. I did not get that yet, it's coming. I'm waiting on that. And then, you know, bleeding out the system and how to test your system for the pedal stop and setting all that up and, you know, you get the idea. I'll go over all that in that video or those two videos. So yeah, I think I'm at uh, 67 subscribers. Friggin' awesome, dude. Like, like that's friggin' sweet. It's awesome. I don't know what I, I don't know what to say about it, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, obviously, you know, not two million, not a hundred, not a hundred thousand, but to me, it's a big deal. So thank you very much for subscribing and liking the videos and leaving comments. So I've got plenty more stuff coming up, and uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. So. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.